Hi YouTube, I'm going to go through the process of how to paint this um, castle on a hill with these rocks. Um, but first I'd just like to say that I'm going to start off by showing you photographs and then later on in the video it goes to a kind of sped up um, video. Um, and the reason for this is just because I'm an adult education tutor and I started this painting in one of my classes. Um, and so I just took a camera with me and just photographed each stage at the beginning. And then when I got home, I did a video of the rest of it. Um, so bear with it and you'll see the whole process. Okay, this is step one. This is done on A3 um, watercolour paper, 300 GSM. Um, so I just started off with this very basic pencil outline of the castle and the main kind of shapes of the rocks. Step two, um, I wanted a really strong sense of the light coming in from the left hand side. So I added a bit more detail to the rocks and then I've just darkened a lot of the outlines to the right hand side of all the rocks and the castle and things just to um, give a sense of shadow even at this kind of line stage. Step three, I've added a few tree branches, a few bushes and some grasses here and there. For the next step I added a lot more grass, um, some of it is kind of upward tufts and some of it looks like it's kind of laying down a bit flatter. Then I decided to add some pencil shading, so mainly to the kind of darker surfaces of the rocks, um, a bit to the castle and I've started adding some texture to the castle. Then even more texture to the castle just to show some of the kind of stonework um, and I've done quite a few kind of shaded sweeping shadows from various clumps of grass and things like that and from the main rocks. Here I added quite a few more tree branches, one uh, top right hand corner and some uh, down the right hand side. Okay for the first painting stage I did the sky so I wet the clouds first just with water and then added the blue into it. The blue is a mix of um, Payne's grey and azure. Uh, and while it was all still wet, I just dropped some green from the bottom and just let it flow into it wet and wet. For the second painting stage, I did a mix of raw sienna and yellow ochre, and I just put it over everything. So like all of the, the bottom part, all of the, you know, the land areas, the castle and all the rocks, and while that was all still wet, I just took a bit of um, kitchen paper and just dabbed out white highlights on the bright edges of the rocks. Then I started breaking up the landscape a little bit with these kind of horizontal sweeps of green. Um, this is olive green mixed with a little bit of lemon yellow. Um, and then I began with the reddish brown colour, which is English red mixed with a bit of raw sienna. Um, started to build up some of the grass textures. This step was just more of the grass textures. Then I added a watered down sepia wash to all of the kind of darker surfaces of the rocks, going over all my pencil shading and um, also the dark side of the castle as well, just blend that across. Then I mixed an even darker sepia wash and again went into the darkest kind of facets of the rocks. Then I added some sepia to the castle and again blended it across and I added some Payne's Grey um, for the sweeping uh, shadows on the rocks, the ones that are sort of cast from one rock onto another. Um, and also sweeping shadows across the ground, going over all the sweeping shadows that I did with pencil. And then I added some kind of sweeps of foliage to the tree and some leaves on the branch coming in from the right hand side. I also painted over all of the branches. Okay, so now we get to the time lapse bit. Um, so everything you saw up until that point was everything that I did in the class for my students. Um, this is me kind of finishing it off at home and you can see actually I ended up doing a lot more to it. So here I am darkening up the branches a bit. Uh, this is just using sepia uh, and I use sepia here as well in all the rocks. So I go right into all of the kind of deepest corners first and then I blend away from those corners and edges and that gives me a lot more contrast. This is it, I mean basically the painting is, you know, it's looking good but it's kind of um, wishy-washy. So from now on it's all kind of building up all the contrast on everything. And you'll see it, it takes quite a while but I think ultimately it's worth it. So remember like the main aim with this was to try and catch the light coming in from the um, left hand side 
Um, you can see here I use carry on using the sepia, but it's just watered down a little bit to add kind of more facets and things into the rocks. Um, going back to the dark sepia, I'm just doing the uh, edge, back edge of the castle, and the edge where it meets um, the kind of archway in the wall. Um, and those two kind of dark edges make quite a difference to the contrast straight away. I can also do, you know, things like the edge parts of the ramparts at the top and give it a bit of texture. Um, more tree branch stuff. So I put the branches on first and then um, quite often I'll come in and add extra foliage and things later. Right, more dark corners to the rocks. You can see obviously because I'm right handed, obviously started at the left here and I'm just working my way across so I'm not kind of rubbing my hand and smudging it at all. So for quite a lot of my watercolour paintings I like to use um, sepia uh, and also Payne's grey as kind of shadow colours. Um, so yeah this sepia again look I'm just adding all the corners and every so often as the paint sort of runs out on my brush and it gets a bit lighter I'll put some kind of extra facets and things into the rocks as I go. Um, so I did sort of copy the main shapes of these rocks from a, a photograph but actually quite a lot of them then I ended up kind of making up as I go along and rocks are just one of those things that you sort of get used to doing the more you do them. Okay this is me coming in with Payne's Grey it's quite hard for you to see that it is Payne's Grey I think on this um, particular um, video but yeah this is Payne's Grey and you can see here what I'm doing is putting all the sweeping shadows in from the rocks and I put them on quite dark actually and I think this kind of gives it like a bit of extra contrast um, and yeah this is just a case of kind of dragging sweeps and just making them go towards a kind of a point I suppose um, I do the same look under the castle and then I'm just putting some foliage on the tree here this is just with um, olive green and this just gives it a bit of texture so the original sweeps that I did they were okay but they were a bit kind of wishy-washy so I just wanted to strengthen them so I thought I might as well put some texture on that as well right this is me coming in with more kind of uh, olive green sweeps just to help break up the whole kind of landscape really again it, it kind of gives it a bit more contrast as well otherwise if everything looks really bright you lose that kind of effect of the light hitting it from one side you need enough kind of dark to balance it out right this is me using English red again with a tiny bit of um, raw sienna mixed in with it and this is to do all the kind of grass textures and things so if you um, if you drew it all with pencil and you've got quite a lot of grasses all drawn in this is just a case really of just going over all of that with the brush um, so it's quite a satisfying stage this because everything happens quite quickly and uh, it adds a lot of texture to the image and don't worry if when you're putting this on if it all looks a bit bright to start with all of the reddish brown colour because you can always come back and neutralise it with a bit of Payne's grey or something later on um, this is me adding a hint of that reddish brown colour as well into the castle Okay, and then I come back and every time I do this I'm just adding more kind of darkness to the rocks I, I like to build up rocks very gradually you could come in you know really dark straight away but I like to kind of just keep adding a wash over the top and then adding another one until I'm happy with it so that I don't overdo it too quickly um, you can add yeah a lot of sweeping shadows again into this they make such a difference like it's no good just thinking about a rock as in you know it's got a bright surface and a dark surface you need to think of all the other kind of mid-tone surfaces as well this is me adding further texture to the actual castle to bring up some of the stonework um, and then you can see I just go back I'm adding um, shadows into the grasses so this is just putting Payne's grey um, back into all of the areas where the grass is mainly on the right hand side um, to give the effect again of the light coming in from the left hand side right this is me going back over all of the rocks I'm just using the tip of my brush mainly to um, add further texture into the rocks 
So more kind of facets and grooves and things into the rocks. And it's important just to try and go in the correct direction when you're doing this um, to give different effects. So I think this adds a lot more kind of interest and detail into the rocks rather than them all just looking quite flat. I mean, we were getting the effect where the light was hitting all, all of the rocks, but this kind of strengthens it all. Um, this is me coming in with some darker Payne's grey to build up the textures on the tree um, and even darker facets on the rocks. Uh, I felt that I needed even more contrast. So I came in really quite strong at this point. Um, it's worth me mentioning that um, this image that you're looking at actually is a little bit paler than how the original image looks. My camera um, didn't pick it up particularly well. So what, what I'll do is at the end I'll put the, um, the photograph that I took of this picture after I'd finished it. I'll put that up again. I put it on the beginning of this video but I'll put it on again at the end so you can see actually the difference between how it looks uh, in this video on this camera and how it looks on my um, my little handheld camera. Right, you can see the difference this makes though, strengthening up all the shadows on the rocks. And obviously you can do this as much or as little as you want. It depends how kind of strong you want your whole image to be at the end. Right, then I come in with some even darker Payne's Grey on the castle. Again, this really strengthens because you, you're having really dark on one side of the castle it really makes the highlights on the other side stand out okay and then I'm coming in adding some sweeping shadows into the rocks and I added actually a little bit of purple um, or violet in with my um, mix here with the Payne's Grey mix and that uh, added another kind of nice colour into the image so yeah, for shadows, apart from kind of sepia and Payne's grey, I quite often will mix in a bit of violet if I want a slightly purpley shadow, um, or blues as well, obviously hints of those into shadows can make them look more realistic as well. Okay, more strengthening into the grasses, um, more shadows coming in from the right hand side here, so that's just kind of watered down Payne's grey going in, and then again strengthening those sweeping shadows a bit more green added to kill some of the white here I went around the rocks with a bit of English red um, and that because the English red is such a different colour to the, the greyness of the rocks that really kind of makes the rocks come forward so that's a good tip if you ever want something to stand out just uh, choose a colour that is completely different to it and you know edge around it with that colour that can make quite a big difference. More Payne's grey work to the tree. A few extra kind of olive green bits at the edges. Some foliage on the other side. Um, and then I thought like I wanted the the corner to be a bit more framed. So at some point I come in with another um, tree branch at the top there. Um, Oh yeah, and then I thought I needed to add a few more shadows coming down onto the rocks from the tree where I'd added a bit more foliage, so I put that in. A bit more texture into the kind of main land area. A bit more texture into the castle. A few more branches, and here's the branch at the top here just to help frame it. And that was it. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is how it kind of really looks in real life. It's a lot stronger coloured. Um, hit subscribe if you want to see more painting tutorials and videos in the future. And I'll catch you in the next video.